Welcome to another Advent of Code walkthrough video. Today we'll be looking at 2022 day 20. Okay, so we're headed to the grove where the star fruit grow. So if we can figure out where that is, we should be able to meet up with them. Fortunately, we have the grove's coordinates, but unfortunately the file is encrypted. So maybe you can decrypt it. So you overhear some elves talk about coordinate file encryption, which involves a decrypting process known as mixing. The encrypted file is given as a list of numbers, uh, all on separate lines, so that would be an example of an encrypted file. And our test input is just the same thing, but like 5,000 lines is long. And so we move the, uh, we mix a file by moving each number forward or backwards based on how many, based on its value, basically. And the list is circular, so moving it off one end wraps it around to the other. And note that a slightly confusing bit is that if your item is currently at the front of the list, then moving it back one doesn't move it to the end, it actually moves it right past the end. So like the first position and the last position of the list are sort of the same. So you should imagine it as an actual cycle. So the list is actually a circle and index zero is would get moved back to index negative two, basically. So to move the uh, number one forward, we take this, and move it past the next one. So it would go between the seven and the eight like so. To move the negative two here backwards by two, we would first move it in front of the four, and then it would move between the eight and the nine. So it would not move right to the end of the nine, it would move past it. And if we write these out in a circle, you can see that the four and the nine are like right next to each other. So when the negative two moves to the front, it's between the four and the nine, which would be the same as if it were in the back. Now, an important thing to note here is that the numbers should be moved in the order that they originally appear. So you can't iterate through the list in terms of uh, going through the indices from one up to n. You have to keep track of where the numbers originally were. So the way we're going to do this, which probably isn't the simplest way, but is definitely the easiest to think about, is with a doubly linked list. So in case you're not aware, a linked list is a data structure where each item points to the next one. The advantage of the linked list is that it's very easy to remove or add elements if you have the pointer to it, because you can just take the one before it and point it to the one after it. And now this object is no longer in the list. So it's a constant time operation to move items out of the middle of the list, and it's also constant time to add items to the, to, into the middle of the list. So if I want to add an item right after this, I just point it to a new item and then point that item back to the original one. And I've just spliced it into the list uh, in constant time. A doubly linked list is the same thing, except each item also points to the one behind it. And this just doubles the amount of time for each operation. So it's still constant time. To delete an item, you just need to update both pointers around it and it's removed. And to insert a new item in a specific position, we just point the pointers going both ways like so. And this also means that we can add an item right before another item as well. So if we have a pointer here, we can add an item before it by shifting the pointers like so. So that's the core logic we're going to use here. We're going to represent each number as a linked list, and then we're just going to store a list of the objects. So as we shuffle our linked list order around, the order of the pointers within our array is the same. And by pointers, I really just mean the actual values themselves. Python doesn't actually have pointers. So let's get our input first. Like so. And now we'll need to make a linked list node class. So class node, we're going to initialize it with a number n, and we're also going to initialize it with a left and a right. So these will be the backwards and forwards pointers. So to link the list together, we're going to make our list, instead of integers, they're going to be node objects. And then after we read in all of our inputs, we'll link the list together by combining the nodes. So for i in range length of x, um, the node at index i, its right node is the next one, like so. Uh, and then its left node is the one right before it. So by the way, yes, this does result in circular references. Um, if we keep t 
taking the right node will eventually circle back to ourselves and this can go on indefinitely. However, this isn't an error because each object is pointing to the specific value of the next, like the specific reference of the next object. And so they link together into a circular linked list, like so. And so each one points to the one after it and the one before it, and these do form a cycle. But because it's references and not values, we don't have an infinite amount of data stored here. You can actually do this in a lot of different ways in Python. So if you have a list A, you can actually insert the list A into itself, and this won't cause an error. When you print it, you'll get dot 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 because the actual representation would go on infinitely, but it's not a problem to have these infinite data structures in Python. So like the zeroth element of A is A itself, so we can keep doing this indefinitely and it'll still equal A. But this doesn't cause errors because we're pointing to a reference. Okay. And so now we just need to do our mixing step. So for uh, k in x, where k is our current node, we'll find, uh, so first of all, if k dot n is equal to zero, we'll set z equal to k and skip. So zero doesn't move, and at the end, we need to do something with the value zero. We need to know its position. So we'll look at this later. For now, if we get a zero, we'll just save it as z and skip it. Okay. And now we just move on with the actual mixing. So to mix, what we could do, which I've seen a lot of solutions do, is just incrementally swap the node with the next one. However, that's a slow operation because that's O of the number of shifts we're doing. We can instead just find the node that many distance away and then perform one switch. Technically, this is still O of n because we still need to take n steps to find the next node. That is the disadvantage of linked lists, but it will be faster. Uh, the performance margin doesn't really matter all that much, so you can do it whichever way you think is easier. But honestly, the amount of work is very similar. So otherwise, we'll start p off equal to k, which p will be the node that we're targeting. If k is greater than zero, then we'll keep stepping forward. So for blank and range uh, k dot n, p equals p dot right. So we'll keep going to the right n times. And if k is less than zero, then for blank and range negative k dot n, p equals p dot left. So now imagine we have a node here with index two. I'm just gonna stop writing out the arrows. And our list goes on like this. And assume it's wide enough that these aren't intersecting. Then if we were moving to the right, we would have selected this node, p dot right once, and then dot right twice goes here. And if this were negative two, we would instead go here. And so if it's positive two, then we want to move our, new, our node right here. And if it's negative two, we want to move it right here. This is slightly annoying because in one case, it's on the right of the node we selected, and in one case, it's on the left. So let's make it always on the right. So if it's negative, we're just going to move over by one more. So minus k dot n minus one, like so. And so now we just need to insert k to the right of p. And there's another little optimization we can do here, which only becomes really relevant in part two. Um, each time we step forward m minus one times, where m is the length of our cycle, we arrive at the same position again. So imagine if our cycle length were five. Then when we step forward one, two, three, four, or sorry, five, we arrive at the same position again. And so if we're trying to move to the right five times, then that would actually move us because uh, the first time we move, we go here, then here, then here, then back to here, and then here. So moving to the right five times would move us. Moving to the right four times, however, wouldn't. Because when we move, we first delete ourselves and leave a gap here. And then we shift to the right n gaps. And since there are now only four gaps, then moving to the right four times would bring us back to the same position. And so instead of mod length x, we mod length x minus one, which we can just call m for modulus. 
then we can just do k.n mod m, and here we can also do negative k.n minus 1 mod m. And so this just means we don't do excess work. And now we just need to figure out how to actually swap the nodes. So imagine we have our node k here with some nodes to its left. I should draw these further apart. And we have some node p and we're trying to move k to the right of p. So we need to do a couple of things. The first thing we need to do is remove k from its current position. So to do that, we're going to set its left node's right node to its right node, and its right node's left node to its left node. If that was a bit confusing, what we're essentially doing is just extending the pointers around k to point to each other, skipping over k in the process. So k.right.left is equal to k.left. So basically, the current nodes, the current right node's left node is it ourselves, but we want to remove ourselves, so our current right node's left node will now become what's to our left, basically this line here. And then k.left.right equals k.right, which is the opposite step. And now we need to actually insert ourselves into this position. So the first thing we need to do is point the current uh, node to the right of p at ourselves towards the left. So currently this pointer is pointing at p, we want to shift it to k. So p dot right dot left is equal to k. And then we also want to point k's right value at it. So currently k is still pointing uh, here, which causes the structure to be impossible. So we want to repoint k at p dot right. So k dot right equals p dot right. And now we want to point p at k. And finally point k at p. And so just like that, k is no longer here. These two are now connected like so. And p is now connected like this to k and then the previous right node and k connected back like that. And so we've successfully moved k to the right of p. One final thing, this will completely glitch if k is equal to p. So if k is equal to p, then we just skip it. And this will work because even though we're cycling around the list, eventually we'll return back. And also, this only happens if k.n is a multiple of m, in which case we would run into this issue here anyway. Okay. So with that out of the way, now we just need to move on to what the final answer is. The Grove's coordinates can be found by looking at the 1, 2, and 3,000th numbers after 0. That's why we kept z around, and we wrap around the list as needed. And we sum these up and output the sum. So t equals 0 for blank and range 3. So since we can't index our list because it's a linked list, we'll just keep stepping to the right a thousand times, stopping at the 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000 mark. So for blank and range 1,000, z equals z dot right. So this skips to the right by 1. And then we'll do this three times. Each time we'll add on the number at our new position. And at the end, we'll just print out t. Um, something tells me that's not right. Oh, yeah. Silly mistake. Uh, OK. Yeah, k dot n is greater than 0, not k is greater than 0. And that still is giving the wrong answer. OK, so it seems like the issue is just that this logic doesn't really work when we do it this way. So we need to uh, actually do it differently between the two steps. So if we're shifting to the right, then this logic still works fine. But we're going to need to invert this on the left side. So if we're moving to the left, we'll actually just insert to the left of p. So in order to do that, we basically just take all the rights and lefts in this thing and switch them around. And this way, instead of inserting k on the right of p, we'll insert k on the left of p. And we just need to remember to change this one-off offset here. OK. And this should hopefully work. Yeah, so we get our test output of 3 and our final output of 7,153. 
For part two, we remember that this, uh, we heard more about the decryption routine at the camp. So we need to apply the decryption key, this number. And so initially we need to multiply each number in the list by the decryption key. So we'll just add that in here. And then secondly, we need to mix the list 10 times. And so since our algorithm is already fast enough, this on its own is already sufficient for answer. So we get that number 16 something 306 as our test output. And okay, it's a bit slow, but okay, 61 something 822 as our final answer. So honestly, a very easy part too, as long as your solution is fast enough. And in this case, although this isn't optimal, it is good enough to work. Uh, these mod M's are crucial though. If you don't do this, you'll absolutely will spend forever waiting for it to run. But yeah, so the core of the solution was really just a double linked list and the switching and stuff was just more or less a tr not trivial, but just like straightforward logic with how to reorder the items within a doubly linked list. So that's all for today's video. Uh, a bit of a shorter one today than the previous few. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 21.